Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Bright Path. In episode 238, I want you to pretend for a moment with me that you are a resilience leader that has inherited a business continuity and crisis management program and you are struggling. Your struggles are that you can't get buy-in from stakeholders and your senior leaders in the organization. You're seeing a clear strategic disconnect between what you're trying to accomplish and what you seem to think that they are looking for. And you feel stuck. So what do you do? Well, I have 10 steps for you that can help you improve this situation. This is one that we see a lot as consultants who practice in this space. Um, I just saw it, uh, I've seen it actually a couple times within the last month where we're conducting our resiliency diagnosis um, program evaluation and we're running into difficulty or the programs that we're evaluating are running into difficulty with leaders in their organization. So what can you do? So let me take you through 10 steps to think about on it. And our goal here is to reset your resilience program and align it more closely with the strategic objectives of your organization. Your goal here is to improve commitment across the organization. The first one is do your own gap analysis. Start by identifying where your current program diverges from what the company's objectives are, what you think their objectives are. And that involves reviewing the existing processes and strategies and resources and outcomes that you have achieved or plan to achieve with your program against the strategic goals of the organization. Where are they disconnected and where can you better align them? The second, and this is one of the hardest ones, is to go engage with key stakeholders in an open-minded way. Hold discussions with the key stakeholders across the organization and try to understand and seek from them their perspective, their concerns, their priorities. Ask them what's happening in their business. Ask them where you and your team can better support them. Ask them what they think about your team, your leadership, and your own program. You should make sure to include executive leadership, uh, department heads, and critical function heads. Titles, of course, here uh, may vary based on how your org is set up. But their input is crucial for aligning your resilience program with those broader organizational objectives. Number three, build an alignment plan. Based on the insights you've gained from your gap analysis and engagement with the stakeholders, draft out a plan that outlines how your program is going to reset and realign to be better aligned with what the organization needs. That should detail specific actions, timelines, and responsible parties. Number four, build some clear communication channels. You wanna make sure that there's ongoing and open lines of communication between your team and the rest of the organization. If you have folks on your team that wanna do business continuity by sitting in their cubicle or sitting at home staring at a computer screen and not engaging with others across the organization, you need to make a change in your organization. If that's your approach as a leader, you need to change your approach. That is not going to be a successful way to lead business continuity in 2024 and beyond. You have to be engaged with the business. Regular updates, feedback loops, collaborative meetings can really foster a sense of involvement and commitment. Number five, look at your policies and procedures and update them to reflect your new alignment with strategic objectives. If they are too damn complicated, simplify them. That might involve introducing new practices or revising current plans to better support the goals of your organization. Number six, revisit or implement for the first time a training and awareness program. You should have a training program and an awareness element that educates employees about the importance of resilience and how it supports the broader organizational objectives. And then you wanna tailor that content to the different roles and responsibilities in your organization. Number seven, Leverage technology and data. Look at what technology solutions you can leverage for business continuity. If you don't have a business continuity tool, start to build the case to have one. Those analytics and metrics can help support your decision-making processes. They enhance the efficiency of resilience operations and they demonstrate your alignment to strategic goals. Number eight, you need to measure and report on your impact. So set up the metrics and KPIs that are going to be important to the business. Use those to measure the impact of your program on organizational objectives. And then report these regularly through your governance processes. You do have a governance process, right? 
regularly report these processes to senior management and stakeholders to demonstrate the value and progress of your program. Number nine is foster a culture of resilience. Work towards embedding resilience into the organizational culture in your company by encouraging proactive thinking, adaptability, and a focus on continual improvement. When you have success stories, highlight those. Work with your communications team to share them on your corporate intranet or create your own SharePoint site and share them yourself. Um, but the learnings from the resilience efforts help reinforce the work that the team is doing. It helps reinforce the work the business is doing and lets them see value for the time that they've invested. Number 10, ask for external guidance. Consider engaging with a consultant or industry peers to gain fresh perspectives and insights on best practices for aligning the resilience program with strategic objectives. You can look at using a coach like me. I coach uh, folks on resilience. I coach resilience leaders all the time. We could coach. You can get a coach. You can go to industry meetings. You can talk with your successful peers um, and learn from that or bring in a consultant to help them evaluate and reset your program. When you're working with peers and industry groups, I would encourage you to seek out peers that are pushing the boundaries with their program, where they've gained good buy-in from their organization and the leadership, the ones that are getting resources for their program, and then ask them how they did it. I guarantee they'll be proud to tell you about the efforts they undertook to help advance the program in their company. By focusing in these areas, you can work to reset your resilience program in a manner that not only aligns with, but actively supports the strategic objectives of your organization. And that will improve the organizational commitment to resilience efforts, and you will look like a rock star. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.